A trip across Spain's geography is to venture into a land that has seen plenty of conflicts, is full of architectural wonders, and features a kaleidoscope of cultures and languages. To see why, join me for this brief look at the political geography of Spain. Spain is the 51st largest country in the world, and the 4th largest in Europe, about three quarters the size of Texas. Once the metropole of an empire that spanned the globe, little of it remains beyond the Canary and Balearic Islands, as well as the two outposts on the African coast, Ceuta and Melilla. No single geographic feature dominates the entire country, although its most important are the mountain ranges along its northern outline, the Cantabrian and Pyrenees, as well as the Meseta Central, an inner plateau that covers most of the Iberian Peninsula. The highest points of the mountains are 1,931 meters for Torre de Cerredo and 3,404 meters for Pic Aneto, respectively, which all things considered is relatively low. In fact, the highest point in Spain is not in the peninsula at all, but in Tenerife, in the Canary Islands, where Mount Teide stands at 3,715 meters. As a whole, this makes Spain have an average elevation of 660 meters lower than the world's and behind countries like Saudi Arabia and Cameroon. Meanwhile, the combination between the mountains, plateau, and, and nearby ocean creates watersheds for multiple navigable river systems, including the longest, the Tagus, followed by the Ebro, Duero, and Guadiana. It also makes for wide climates and ecosystems. According to the Köppen-Geiger scale, Spain features an impressive 17 ecoregions, ranging from polar tundra in the Pyrenees to hot desert in parts of the Costa del Sol in the Canary Islands. It also gets plenty of sun year-round, sometimes in places you might not expect, like Barcelona, which happens to be the sunniest city in Europe in December. Spain is the 30th most populated country in the world, with around 47.5 million people, the 6th most populated in Europe, or 7th if you include Turkey. This translates to the 95th most densely populated country on the planet, with around 94 people per square kilometer, a low number for Western Europe, where every other country except for Ireland is most densely populated. Most of these people live along the coast and in Madrid, the latter of which has about 13% of the country's total population, followed by Barcelona, Valencia, Sevilla, and Bilbao. Politically, Spain is divided into 17 autonomous communities, which are further subdivided into 50 provinces, 465 comarcas, and 8,131 municipalities. Because of the country's tumultuous history of conquest, royal alliances, and cultural divisions, there are no traditional regional demarcations, so any division I could come up with would probably be questioned by Spaniards themselves. Nonetheless, for our purposes, we can divide the country into seven regions, which again, are just cultural approximations simplified to get a taste of the richness of the country. These are the Northwest, the North, the Northeast, the Center, the East, Andalusia, and the Canary Islands and African outposts. We begin with the Northwest, a part of Spain which has always had some level of distinctiveness compared to the rest of the country, with its own culture and not one but two languages, Galician and Astorleonese. The former still spoken by some 2.5 million people, while the latter has somewhere around 700,000 speakers, although this number is the sum of mutually intelligible dialects, Asturian and Leonese. As it happens, the Northwest also contains the oldest cave art in Europe, the Cuevas de Monte Castillo believed to have been painted sometime around 39,000 to 11,000 BCE, and the most famous, Altamira, which was created a bit later, sometime between 33,000 BCE to 11,000 BCE. The region was once the domain of Celtic tribes and later the Suevi, a Germanic people that showed up in the area around 409 CE. Their presence can still be seen today in the Celtic castros that dot the landscape and archaeological pieces now in the various museums in the region, as well as its folk music. Nonetheless, their pagan imprint pales in comparison to the fame of what was, and still remains, one of the most important churches in all of Christendom, the Cathedral of Santiago de Compostela, which is the end point for hundreds of thousands of souls that take the pilgrimage along the road of Santiago every year and have been doing so for centuries. The reason is that according to legend, the apostle that supposedly brought Christianity to the Iberian Peninsula, James, is buried here. That this gained such a mythical status is not surprising, since it was here that the first Christian kingdom opposed to the Muslim domain in Spain, the Kingdom of Asturias, was born. This happened in turn as a result of a key clash in Spanish history, the Battle of Covadonga, where Pelagius and the Christian forces beat back the Moors in 718. As it happens, one of its towns, Ferrol, also produced two of the most important political figures in Spanish history. Francisco Franco for the right, a fascist dictator that ruled the country for nearly four decades, and Pablo Iglesias for the left, the founder of Spain's Socialist Party, PSOE, and its most important trade union. 
Beyond this, the area is known for its cider from Asturias, its rugged beaches which remain relatively undiscovered, and its main other cities, A Coruña, the region's main financial and industrial center, as well as Oviedo and Gijón, which are full of medieval churches and museums celebrating the local culture. We continue with the north, another region that has always had a distinctive culture and language, that is Basque, which the locals refer to as Euskera and will tell you is both the oldest in Europe and is totally unrelated to any other language in the world, and whose speakers today number over 700,000. The region has a rich history. It was once divided into two independent kingdoms, Basconia and Navarra, both conquered by the neighboring Castilians in the 12th and 16th centuries respectively. But its most well-known historical event is a tragic one, the bombing of the town of Guernica in April 1937. Carried out by the Nazis at the request of Franco during the Spanish Civil War, it was poignantly captured by Picasso in perhaps the most famous anti-war painting of all time, simply called Guernica. The continued Francoist repression of Basque culture and language led to the development of an armed separatist movement in the region embodied most notably by the ETA, a paramilitary group which carried out a number of bombings, assassinations and kidnappings starting in the 1960s, it has since been dissolved and today Basque separatist sentiment seems to be at a low ebb of less than 20%. These days, the area is best known for its attractions, including the Bilbao Guggenheim Museum, which was founded in 1997 and has done much to revive the industrial city, referred lovingly by its inhabitants as Bocho, or the whole. There's also what is recognized as one of the best food scenes in Europe at San Sebastián, which specializes in pinchos, the Basque version of tapas. The Basque country's capital, Victoria Gasteis, known for its murals and the wine produced just to the south of La Rioja. Perhaps the most recognized event abroad, not just from this region, but all of Spain, however, is the running of the bulls, a tradition that might have begun as early as the 14th century and is celebrated every July during the day of San Fermín in Pamplona. Although the event itself barely lasts around three minutes, it is quite dangerous. Since records began in 1924, some 16 people have died, and serious injuries are common. Next is the Northeast. This region is the heart of the once mighty Kingdom of Aragon, which prospered from its domination of the Mediterranean trade roughly between the 11th and 14th centuries, and which developed its own language, Catalan, which still distinguishes the region today. Its best-known city is the charming Barcelona, one of the most livable cities in Europe, known for its wide avenues, the tradition of Barcelona FC, historical landmarks including Montjuic and Barrio Gothic, and the works of its most celebrated architect, Antonio Gaudí, such as La Sagrada Familia and Park Well. The imprint of history is hardly confined to Barcelona, however. There are Roman ruins in Tarragona, now a UNESCO World Heritage Center, Mudejar architecture, that is, Moorish-influenced construction in Zaragoza and Teruel, including the Aljaferia, and La Torre de San Martín, respectively, numerous medieval sites such as the carved stone buildings in Peratalada and the Castillo de Loarre in Huesca, dating from the 10th and 11th century, respectively. The one you're most likely to have seen, however, is probably Girona's Cathedral, which was used as a film location for Game of Thrones in Season 6. Beyond that, the region is known for its Costa Brava, a coastal area that tourists flock to sunbathe and see fishermen's villages like Tosa de Mar, as well as Salvador Dalí pieces of art, which are scattered in a triangle throughout northern Catalonia, as it was here in Figueres, where he was born in 1904, and then would continue to live off and on for the rest of his life, including in the tiny village of Portligat during the early years of the Franco regime. The other famous piece of art from this area you probably have seen is the so-called Potato Jesus, a failed restoration of a fresco painted in 1930 in the Cathedral of Borja, a tiny town of less than 5,000 people which now gets regular visitors looking for the botched painting. We now move on to the east. This area was also once part of the Aragon Kingdom and as such it inherited the Catalan language, although the version spoken here is known as Valencia. This, as you might expect, stems from its most important metropolis and province, Valencia. The city first came to prominence during the Middle Ages, an imprint you can still see in constructions like the Torre de Serranos, but its most famous landmark began to be built in 1996, the Ciudad de las Artes y las Ciencias, erected on top of the Rio Turias old riverbed by Spain's most famous living architect and Valencia's own Santiago Calatrava. Its futuristic buildings complex are quite a contrast with the rest of the city and have been the background of numerous movies like Tomorrowland. The broader region's prosperity has always come from the trade and access to the Mediterranean. It was here, for instance, that the Moors established Europe's first paper manufacturing plant in Shativa, a place that also happens to be the birthplace of the Borgia Popes, Calixtus III and Alexander VI. The region then became a producer of silk in the 16th century, which was then replaced by oranges, a cultivar that subsequently expanded all over the Mediterranean. These connections are also evident in its most famous drink and dish, 
The first is the Horchata de Chufa, a tiger nut based drink, a version of which also became popular in Latin America. And the second is of course paella, which has all sorts of variations, but always involves rice. Its most famous historical association, meanwhile, is probably that with El Cid, a mythical medieval Castilian knight who was born in Burgos in 1043 CE. His importance to the region comes from the fact that he recovered this area from the Moors in 1094 CE, exploits which then became the basis for the oldest preserved poem in Spanish. Beyond that, the region features Ibiza, one of the Balearic islands known for its wild nightlife. The Palmera del Elche, Europe's largest palm grove originally planted by the Phoenicians, the Misteri de Ish, an annual medieval play about the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, Peñiscola, a beach with a castle built by the Knights Templar in 1307, and Lorca, a town featuring a medieval fortress which happens to have been built over the Jewish quarter and still houses the synagogue from that time. Next is the center. This region is the heartland of what once was the Kingdom of Castile, the center of power of what became the Spanish Empire and the source for the language we now call Spanish, but among its speakers is often still called Castilian. Its notable history dates from much earlier, however. It is here, for example, at Atapuerca, that the oldest known human remains in Europe have been found, dating from nearly one million years ago. And it was here that two ancient capitals were established, Merida for the Roman province of Lusitania in 25 BCE, and Toledo for the kingdom of the Visigoths in 542 CE, a rank it would lose after the Moors' conquest of the peninsula, but would briefly regain during the reign of Charles V. And of course, this region has the country's current capital at Madrid, a distinction it gained in 1561 when King Philip II brought his court here to the largest royal palace in Europe, a place you can visit today. But that is hardly the only place worth visiting for its architecture in the region. There's the Roman villa at La Olmeda, picturesque medieval towns like Segovia and Avila, which also feature a nearly intact Roman aqueduct and the best preserved medieval wall in the country, respectively, as well as Salamanca, a town known for its gorgeous plateresque buildings and for housing the oldest active university in the country, which was established in 1218. Beyond that, the region is known for Madrid landmarks like the Gran Vía, Puerto de Alcalá, Plaza Mayor, and the Museo del Prado masterpieces, which range from Goya to Diego Velázquez, among many others. And of course, it's jamón, the best of which comes from Extremadura. It is also known for being the birthplace of some of the country's most notable people, including the author of Don Quixote, Miguel de Cervantes, conquistadors Hernán Cortés and Francisco Pizarro, as well as actresses Penelope Cruz and Elsa Pataki. We'll continue with Andalusia, the part of Spain that was part of an Islamic caliphate for over seven centuries and whose legacy persists, including in the great mosque now Cathedral of Córdoba, the Mudejar Palaces of Seville, the Alcanzaba in Málaga, and most famously in the Alhambra in Granada, an Islamic palace whose construction began in 1238. Historically speaking, however, this region has played a key role in Spanish history far beyond its Islamic period. It was here in the Port of Palos, for example, that Columbus first sailed from when he left for the Americas. Cádiz would then become the preferred sailing point for future Spanish conquistadors. It was also here that the first Spanish constitution was written at Cádiz in 1812, after Napoleon invaded and imposed his brother as king in 1808, and multiple key battles took place, including the Battle of Alcolea in 1868, which would end Queen Isabella II's reign and eventually usher in the first Spanish Republic. It was also here that the first battles of the Spanish Civil War took place, which were centered around Madrid in 1936. Meanwhile, the Golden Age brought many riches to the region, the product of which can still be seen not just in its main cities, like Seville and Cádiz, but also in small towns such as Baeza and Ubeda. Beyond that, the region is known for being a major center of olive oil production, its various people associated with the arts, including painters like Picasso and Diego Velázquez, poets like Francisco García Lorca, and actors like Antonio Banderas and Paz Vega, but most of all, flamenco a type of music and dance most closely associated with the Romani people, or Gitanos, as they are known in Spain. The last region is the Canary Islands and African outposts, which might as well be called remnants of empire. The islands, for example, were conquered and incorporated by the Castilian crown in the 14th century, and their original inhabitants known as Guanches were either wiped out or assimilated into Castilian society. The African outposts, meanwhile, were part of a much larger Moroccan Spanish protectorate which lasted from 1912 until 1956, although Spanish possession of both Ceuta and Melilla preceded this. In fact, Ceuta first came into Spain's orbit when the Portuguese and Spanish crowns were briefly united in the 16th century after a lack of heirs brought the Portuguese throne to Philip II. 
Later, when the Portuguese gained back their independence, Ceuta was the only city in the former Portuguese empire to side with Spain, leading to it becoming a permanent Spanish territory. Melilla, meanwhile, was seized by the Catholic kings in 1497 and has been part of Spain ever since, although the government's interest in it and its own fortunes have ebbed and flowed throughout the years. Today, the region is known for Tenerife's Auditorium, one of the finest examples of architecture in the country, the Carnival of Santa Cruz at Tenerife, the second largest in the world after Rio, its resorts and beaches, its nightlife, and the fortifications of Ceuta and Melilla. Its most famous son, meanwhile, is probably Javier Bardem, who was born in Las Palmas in 1969. Historically, meanwhile, Spain has had a number of political divisions, most notably between Madrid and some of what are now autonomous communities. These political demarcations have not translated into clear political lines across the Spanish geography, however. So, for instance, Catalonia has tended to be more leftist than the rest of the country for over a century now. But this has not meant voting for a particular party or group. Indeed, in the past 10 elections, it has voted for at least 12 different parties, often dividing its vote between Barcelona and its hinterland. And with this, we conclude our trip across the Spanish landscape. I hope you make it a point to go there as soon as you can.